Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And I'm producing, uh, amongst lots of other videos, I'm producing a batch of videos which cover basic skills in a workshop. Uh, and this video covers, realistically, whether you should be using insulation tape or whether... That was tight. Whether or not we should be using, let's say, heat shrink. Okay. Now, heat shrink is, you know, a few steps up, and most people don't use it. Not really domestic stuff. Um, domestic stuff, you know, somebody's wiring a radio up in the car. All the little joins, they'll chuck some insulation tape over those joins, and I do this quite a bit. However, if I'm doing a, a you know, an installation, a wiring installation on a particular vehicle. I want to last. Um, say if I'm, you know, putting in a trailer socket or putting up some spotlights on the roof of a four-wheel drive or, or or whatever it is like that, wiring up a winch system, then heat shrink really is important because that vehicle is going to be working in a really harsh environment, and we need to, you know, protect the wiring from those elements, from all the dirt and the mud uh, and the water. So things like quad bikes as well, you know, heat shrink covering the joints on the wiring is really critical. In, you know, otherwise, you're going to have the job to do again in a year's time, and then a year, again in a year's time after that. And um, you know, I used to run a, a very large fleet. I think it was 38 quad bikes we had at one point in the UK, um, and a similar number of four-wheel drives. So I didn't have the time to keep redoing jobs, even if it was affecting a CB radio onto the dashboard of the car. I'd use heat shrink for any of the joints, and they'd all be soldered as well, which was really important. However, for the majority of tasks. Um, insulation tape will do the trick and that was easy. And fitting the insulation tape onto the wire um, is, you know, you want it to look nice and neat and tidy and it's actually quite difficult to do that. The first rule of thumb when using insulation tape is to make sure you've got clean hands and just take off a small amount. Don't try to wrap the reel round and round the wire. Okay, and you get, grab the wire like this and just put it on, you know, sort of two thirds on over the insulation. And you want to be at about a 30 degree angle if you can, and then just run it down the wire. So you're ending up with about double thickness. Now try to touch the adhesive side of the tape uh, as little as possible. It's not, it's not easy. If your fingers are clean, then there won't be too much grease that is that's going to, you know, affect that uh, the stickiness of that tape. Now you don't have to use the whole lot if you found you've got to the point where you've covered everything up and you're happy. And it's usually the tail of that insulation that's lost its sticky stuff, stickiness because you've been touching it quite a bit. Then you can just break it off or use some scissors uh, and then just roll it round. And that that's that's not a bad a bad coverage. It works. It's cheap and it works and it's quick. And for most people's applications, it does the job. Now, because I've soldered this joint together, that tape is in no way holding the two wires together. Its job is just to insulate that joint where it's, where it's got the solder, it's bare in the middle. Because if that was to touch the body of the car, it would short out, no doubt. Um, so, the same goes if you're using a crimp terminal. You know the terminals essentially hold themselves together usually. They're, they're quite tight when you push them together. But you do sometimes get a small area of the terminal which is bare metal, which could short out on something. So again, insulation tape is a great idea um, to hold or to prevent the, uh, the, the, the two parts of the connectors um, coming apart, but also to insulate the unit as well. Um, if you're one of the twisty wires together brigade, which is pretty common out there, unfortunately, then there's a bit of a trick to ensuring that they're not going to fall apart as well. Now, if you put the two wires parallel, and I, I don't endorse this, all right, so please don't say, oh, Andy Mechanic said to do this, because I'm not, but I know what you guys are like, some of you, and this is what you'll end up doing. So you've got the two wires, and you know, you twist them together like this. Now, I know in the the electrics world, the house domestic electrics world of New Zealand, 
this is how a lot of them do it. And then they put a little cap on the top with a screw. Yeah. Okay. 240 volts. Anyway, I don't make the rules. It's what they do. Um, so we've joined those two together like that. We've twisted it together. There's not really a great deal holding that together. And then if we just bend it down like that, then it makes it a lot neater. And then again, you can get a bit of tape. Oh, I don't know, a couple of inches will do, two and a half inches. And again, we can just drop the tape on. First of all, over pretty much over the insulation to start off with, and then we're going to work our way down. And I know I've got big fingers, and I'm not great at this, but I do a pretty good job. It works. What the hell was that? Okay, there we go, look, and again, usually the, the last bit I just break off because it's usually lost most of its sticky stuff. And that will, the way that that's done, it's going to help to hold the joint together, but it's also going to insulate it at the same time. So that's something which I don't endorse, but I know it happens out there. Lots of wires get twisted together just to connect them. It's fine as a temporary get your home thing, no bother at all long term it's gonna fail guys all right so you're a lot better off uh, soldering it now that's that's the tape and tapes really versatile and it's great and it can also be used for holding batches of wires together now you may have seen on that Yamaha Viking video um, I was um, holding the wiring harness to the body of the vehicle and also a number of bits of wiring harness that are branching out, I, take, I, I actually tape them all together. Um, the reason why I didn't use a zip tie is because zip ties, the plastic is really quite strong. And if it's a muddy environment, the plastic of the zip tie can actually, in conjunction with the, the, the grains of dirt, the abrasive can rub through into the wiring harness and actually start to cut through wires. I know it happens, I've seen it happen on many, many of our quad bikes. Uh, over the years. Um, so I've found that using insulation tape, which has got a bit of give in it, you know, and it's nowhere near as harsh, worst case scenario it might just snap, um, it's not going to damage be, be damaging towards the wiring. So that's a really good op opportunity um, to use insulation tape. You know, to some people it might look a little bit bodgy. Um, I don't think it does. It's done for a reason, a specific reason. And anything to help cut down my time on redoing jobs and fixing wiring faults uh, was a bonus to me. So insulation tape um, to, to hold wires in place. Just three or four wraps is, is plenty strong enough. You don't need to go mental over it. Um, hey, my mate. Um, is a good idea. Now, heat shrink. Let's get on to the fun stuff. Okay. Because otherwise this video is going to get way too long. Okay, so remember our little solder joint? Well, we're going to go back to that for this one because this is the one. There's no way you would bother to use heat shrink over wires that are twisted together. Um, would you use it over crimp terminals? Yeah, you can. It would work. It's not great, but it would work. Um, so, anyway, solder definitely ideal for using uh, heat shrink. Now, the important thing is to choose the right size heat shrink tube, and you can normally get this. You can buy this in rolls or you can buy it in pre-cut lengths. Rolls are by, by far the most economical way of doing it. And you can get two kinds of heat shrink. You can get one where there's no adhesive on the inside. And you can get others that actually has an a heat reactant adhesive. So once you've slid it on to the wire and you've warmed it up, it actually glues itself to the wire and it creates a much better seal. And really, really is ideal at keeping out any kind of moisture. Uh, this stuff isn't the adhesive stuff. I was, I was given this years ago and there's still quite a lot in the box. It's, it's lasting for ages. Okay, so you need, as regards length, you've got the joint in the middle. You need some overlap. You don't want to be going right down here. That's a waste of heat shrink. But I would say you need at least 10 to 15 mil of overlap. And the reason for that is when this stuff shrinks, it doesn't just shrink in diameter. It does actually get slightly shorter as well. And the last thing you want is a little tiny gap of um, you know, exposed wiring and I have to put some more heat shrink over that. So this is the length that came out of the actual box. Sure, I could cut this down 
Um, but I'd be left with a, oh yeah, okay, I'll put it down. So, as regards length, what have we got? So we want about 10 mil overlap at each side, so that's about there, look. Okay, let's cut that down. Now, you want to be using either scissors or side cutters. But when you cut this stuff, you want one clean single cut across the full width. You don't want any jagged edges, because if you have any jagged edges or little slits in there or misalignments, then as it shrinks down, it can split. It's a, it's a, it's a, it becomes a weak point, and it, it can split down there, and then you've wasted your time. So one nice, neat snip will give you a, a real clean edge on there. And you know, obviously, if this is two parts of the wiring harness, you need to slide this on before you solder the joint and also make sure it's far enough back on the wiring to make to, to not be affected by the heat when you're soldering it. That's another common mistake. Okay, and you've got to slide it across so it's about in the middle, so you've got equal um, insulation on the wiring, so it's, it's central to the joint. And then all you need to do basically is just get your little blowtorch and you can see that it's just shrinking down bit out of gas is this one at the moment so you can just see that shrinking down there look and then rotate it round okay don't overcook it because if you do you'll start to see the surface of the of the plastic start to burn that's not good there you go look perfect and within a few seconds that's going to cool down it's going to harden and that that's a really professional way of you know insulating that joint. Uh, it keeps the moisture out. It doesn't add any real strength to the joint. Don't, don't be under the impression it does. It's not, that's not its job. Its job is to insulate. But it does provide a, an exceptional insulation. Um, if you're not particularly good at wiring and uh, you're new to it, then I would suggest that you stick with the insulation tape. The reason for that is it's very easy to take the tape off and unplug a wire if you've got got it wrong you made a mistake um, the professional way of doing it you know and you don't want to be starting to cut this off and having to un unsolder the joint to release it if you've made mistakes on your wiring it starts to become quite expensive um, this is a very much a permanent connection okay um, that really covers uh, the using of heat shrink I mean there's there's lots of different uh, diameters and colors and stuff um, it is quite useful to use colors that relate to whether the wire is an earth wire or whether it's a positive. Um, I know that when I'm looking at wiring and I see red, then I'm always thinking of battery positive, uh, red battery positive. And if I see something that's black, usually that's an earth wire. So you know, if, if it is an earth wire you're working on, put some black stuff on it. If it's if it's got a if, it, if it's live in any way, stick some red on it. Um, it might help the next guy later on not to curse at you too much who's going to be working on that vehicle. Okay, so heat shrink, real easy, very simple to use, and um, oh, and also yeah, don't, forget, don't forget the insulation tape as well. Um, very simple, very effective. Uh, if you want to keep your toolbox to a minimum, then insulation tape. You don't need a soldering iron, you don't need gas, all that kind of stuff. Um, just stick with the insulation tape. Uh, there is another video that's going to cover crimp type connectors, and uh, that again, how to use those crimp connectors. Very, very common, used all over the place. Um, you know, I used to use lots of them before I started soldering things, and I, I just got that, that next level, you know. But, um, yeah, crimp-type connectors, and, of course, scotch locks. They'll be in the next video as well. Okay, uh, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the uh, lecturers down at um, Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand, and I do these videos to help my students and you guys. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Any comments, leave them down the bottom, and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I can. Cheers. Over and out. Thank you.